Ita for continuing to cut my own hair, instead of paying to have my cousin's new wife cut it. I've only had my hair professionally done one time in my life. I know the snucky response is yeah, and everyone can tell or something like that. I learned to do my hair as a teen. I'm 36 and struggling, have four roommates to help pay rent, and just don't have the extra money for luxuries outside getting a bottle of three buck chuck every other paycheck. Or I wish my life was sex and the city, getting my hair did and nails with the girls sipping eight dollars cocktails, but that's not the lot I was given so be it. Kathy married into my family, and she does hair for a living. Last time at a family get together she zeroed in on me and made a joke like time for a haircut. And I said oh yeah, I need to trim the ends soon. She gasped dramatically and put her hand on her chest and was like you need to. Oh sweetie, that's what I'm here for. Let's get you in, okay? I shook my head no and said no thanks, I cut my own hair. She looked appalled and said honey, it's okay, I'll be gentle. I just said no thanks again, and went on with the gathering. My cousin announced that Kathy's happy to cut hair for us for a discounted rate and that we need to support one another. Kathy just looked at me and smiled knowingly. I was annoyed but just ignored it until like a week later. My cousin texted me to ask if I was interested in using Kathy's services, and that she had some openings this weekend. I said no thanks. He pushed the issue saying come on, support a family member who has had a rough year with the shutdowns. I just responded it's out of my budget. He responded with wow, okay. I guess it's too much to ask you to support us. I wrote back I have $15 to last me until my next paycheck. Are you going to support me? and then waited 10 seconds and sent didn't think so. Mom called me later and said that Kathy was just trying to get me to break out of a rut, and was trying to be helpful, and that getting my hair done in a new way might be empowering for me. Then she said that maybe I can adjust my budget and drop a few things to make room to support someone in the family going through a hard time. I asked her bluntly why no one in the family has ever pushed everyone around to help me and she just got quiet and said oh, sweetie, and hanged up. Ita, question mark. NTA, you have a strict budget and you stick to it. But even if you did have the money, there is still absolutely no obligation to get your hair done by anyone, family member or not. You do you up. Believe me, I wish I knew how to cut my own hair. I asked her bluntly why no one in the family has ever pushed everyone around to help me and she just got quiet. Perils of being the family member who gets on with things and doesn't always complain about their lot in life. People tend to forget that you have issues as well. You are definitely NTA in this situation though. You've been polite all the way through in saying no but they just keep on pushing. NTA. Kathy isn't doing this out of the kindness of her heart, she is hustling you for money because you're a captive audience since your family. I guess your cousin thought that it's easier to guilt and pressure family members than friends because you can't stop being family with someone. If she were about to do your hair for free, then this would be a different story. But it's out of your budget and they're being extremely pushy, which is irritating as hell. Stand your ground. Absolutely NTA. What is wrong with your mom that she doesn't even listen to your financial condition? It's presumptuous of her to suggest that you rearrange your budget to support your cousins-in-law. Ita for telling my co-workers why I quit. I, 21F, started working at a coffee shop about two months ago. I loved it when I first started, it was hard work but enjoyable and I made good tips. I liked my co-workers and the owners as well. For context, the owners are a young couple. The owner I am referencing in this is the wife, let's call her V. Yesterday, when I was working my shift I saw some things that make me wildly uncomfortable. To start, the manager that works there, I'll be calling her M, does all the duties of a manager, but is not technically one. I found out that she is being paid 9 an hour which is less than half of what Starbucks managers make. This is a family owned shop in a wealthy part of town. It's criminal how they pay her. It's all also important to note that the shop is severely understaffed. Before I quit there were three employee, plus the owners who both have jobs. I was expected to work and close alone, 
I got off training less than a month ago, on Friday and Saturday nights, which are the busiest nights of the week, it's also a bakery so it still gets business at night. At this point I think they are understaffing to make a profit. Anyways, aside from the pay thing, yesterday while I was on shift I witnessed the yelling at M about completely mundane things. It was extremely inappropriate and degrading. The way she talked to M made it seem like she was a child not the grown woman who keeps the shop from four falling apart. It made me so uncomfortable to see the owners treating the most valuable worker they have with such little respect and regard for decency. I have a no tolerance policy for things like this in the workplace. Additionally, the owners tried to implement an illegal practice that requires employees to pay draw shortages. It's illegal in my state to do so unless written consent is given and only if the deduction doesn't make the worker go below minimum wage. This wasn't an issue until my draw came up short short 7 bucks Friday night. They tried to make me pay it even though everyone else also worked that day. I just had the responsibility of counting the draw. They ended up dropping the whole thing after I told them I would call the workforce commission in my state and report them for illegally deducting my wages. I know it's only 7 bucks. But it isn't about the money, it's about the legality and the lack of respect in all regards. Anyways, I quit this morning. I decided it would be appropriate to tell my friend who recently got hired, but hadn't started yet, what happened, as well as the high school age girl I worked with there. I thought it would be important for them to know about the treatment going on. I'm afraid I too because I think what I did was right, but I also might not have been my place to contact my co-workers and tell them what happened. If they quit the place will go under, which I don't feel that bad about because it's the owner's fault they treat staff badly, but I still do feel a little guilty. Ita for potentially causing a shop to close down and for contacting my co-workers. Update, thank you for all the kind words. After I quit I felt more confident about the situation, as she tried to start gaslighting me about not understanding reality. She also said several times it was sad I was quitting over a cash shortage. I made sure to correct her and tell her it was her abusive behavior that made me quit. Update, a lot of comments are suggesting I make the report anyways. I really want to do this. The only issue is they will obviously know it was me, and I'm afraid of retaliation of some kind. They know where I live because they had to come pick up the key to the store, the owners locked themselves out, from my apartment at one point, which weirded me out but that's another issue. I know it's unlikely that anything would happen but I am nervous nonetheless and not sure exactly what would be best. I made sure to text the current workers the laws and explained to them why it is illegal, so I am hoping they will be able to stand their ground. Update, I've decided to go ahead and file the complaint. Partly for the illegal wage deductions, but mainly because of the underpayment of the manager. I realized it's abnormal to have a shop and two owners with full-time jobs but no real manager. Then I realized what they were doing taking away one or two tasks that would classify her as a manager so they they could continue to underpay her. It's abhorrent, I hope the investigation reveals underpayment and she is able to collect what belongs to her. That which can be destroyed by the truth, should be, PC, Hodgill, NTA. If the owners of the coffee shop are treating their employees in an unsustainable way, they are the ones who will deal with the fallout. That being said, I highly doubt that you speaking frankly about your experiences working there will lead to the shop's closure. Best case scenario, they have to start treating their workers better. More likely scenario, they continue to be are with a high turnover rate that they blame on incompetent help. NTA. If you accurately told people you already know what was going on, know a holery involved. If others threatened to quit, they might smarten up their act. Natar. Younger staff, especially if it's a first job, may not know their rights or know that being berated for small mistakes is not accepted in the workplace. You did good to warn them. If the business fails that's the fault if the owner's poor management skills. NTA. If they don't want everyone to quit the owners should 1. Not deduct wages 2. Pay people properly and 3. Not understaff as severely. Like it's not your fault that the owners suck. What goes around comes around. Ita for telling my family that my brother earns less than his wife. My brother, M32, who we'll call Luke is a good guy, but he's very lazy. He's always wanted money but never wanted to work for it. His wife, F30, who we'll call Jane, 
is awesome. Me and my wife are so happy he's with her because she's just very kind and funny, and has become a good friend to us as well as family member, particularly with my wife. She has a high paying job. She live in a nice house, buy nice things, have a nice car etc. My brother has a pretty normal job. He's not very ambitious and now that he's with her, he's content with that, which is totally fine by the way. Jane has told my wife a couple times that she doesn't mind paying for everything, but that he doesn't like to talk about it in public, and get defensive if she mentions anything that she bought when friends or family are present, I have noticed this too. Well, my parents got vaccinated so we all went there for dinner. It was a great time. At one point, my dad is taking about finances and saving, etc. And my brother mentions the house he bought and the car he bought, me and my wife are rolling our eyes, Jane looks a little disgruntled. And then, at one point he says yes we have a simple relationship with money, I make it, she spends it. Like a joke, but joking about the wrong thing if that makes sense, because he's alluding to the fact that this is true. So I say Luke, that's a bit unfair. Jane is the breadwinner in your household, and she bought the house and car didn't she? He laughs and says no. So I don't bother after that. He called me later and blasted me saying it was none of my businesses and so what if she bought those things. Said he should be a little more appreciative and respectful. We haven't spoken since, and my mum and dad are annoyed that I said it because it made dinner awkward. Edit, Jane appreciated it. He brought this on himself when he kept going on about how only he paid for stuff. Normal couples say we bought a house. You just asked for some decency for his wife. NTA. NTA. I was originally going to say you were the R from the title because it wouldn't be your place to tell anyone about your brother and his wife's finances, but it sounds to me like you were just trying to defend your sister-in-law from your brother's comments which weren't just untruthful, but purposefully mean-spirited at his wife's expense. Maybe not the most opportune time to put him on blast, but he was lying and making rude jokes about his wife and making her embarrassed and uncomfortable and you came to her defense. So not the R. Your brother, however, is a massive R and I hope his wife keeps her finances separate. NTA but I really don't understand why Jane with with this asshole. Nata, my shitty, deadbeat ex-boyfriend used to pull the same shit as Luke and it was infuriating. Like, the misogyny, the entitlement. It's not just that he's acting like he's the breadwinner here, he's actually engaging in misogynistic tropes. Ladies be spending shit, and downplaying the hard work his wife does in the process. Also, for the people saying it's not Op's place, Luke literally brought it up, he invited scrutiny. Exclamation mark. Please continue to put Luke's scrub ass on blast. Thanks.